What's good, YouTube? Chris from Team Innovation here, bringing you guys my top 10 decks for the August 2015 format. Now, I know a lot of you guys are saying, damn, Chris, it's July right now, so why are you doing it one for August 2015? Well, I'm doing it for August 2015 because right now, July, the format is stagnant. It's pretty much the same. And next month, we have um, new decks coming out and a lot of and a new set and i feel like some of those decks may be top, top contenders for the format so i wanted to include at least one of those decks on this top 10 list so without further ado let's begin starting off this top 10 list with a, a deck that a lot of you guys will be surprised with tombs tombs is a really really great deck i saw it for myself live at locals yesterday the deck can stall you out really great Comic Hand is an amazing card. Snatch stealing an opponent's monster, makes allowing you to attack directly for a really good amount of damage, and it has a surprise factor for your opponent not knowing what they're doing. If this deck goes first, he go Toon Gemini Elf on your turn, Toon Table Cons to go grab Comic Hand. I believe they can grab Comic Hand. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, anyway, they have their Comic Hand and they have Toon Gemini Elf on the field. And they can just poke for damage all day. It's just really great in general, the deck and toolbox. And with that being said, since the deck has a big surprise factor right now, I have it on the top 10 list due to the fact that no one's going to know how to play against it. And it's honestly really, really scary. So coming in number 10, I have tunes for that reason alone. Coming in at number 9, I have Synchrons. Now, Synchrons get some new support. Next set, they, they get a new Stardust. Synchro that does some, some kind of negation effect. They have this Junk Synchron guy. He's level 1. Trishula got on band with as supports of the deck. And Quasar is still a card. So, Junk Doppel Synchron or Synchron or Plant Synchron. Any version of Synchron is really great. This deck can really put in some work with the Synchro plays. It does kind of lose the Max C, which, I, which is the reason why it's number 9 on the list and not higher up in the ranks on the list. But, with that being said, the deck is really great. Really powerful. I mean, Trishula and Quasar are no cards to laugh at. And since I believe this deck and some of those cards consistently alone or enough to get it far in the tournament, I had to have it on this list at number nine. Because with the new support coming out and with Trish and Quasar being on release, this deck can do some damage. Coming in at number eight, we have Infernoids. Now, Infernoids get new support next format, and I have a credible source telling me that the support is really great. Um, the deck can already OTK and it can control right now. I mean, I mean the deck has it out pretty much for everything. It can beat the meta with the right setup, and it can just win out of nowhere. I've seen Inferno, Inferno with players just win out of nowhere, and with the way the format is shaping up, with everyone just thinking it's the same thing as the last format, and they only have to worry about five decks. And foreigners can just steal games based on the fact that no one's siding for it. So that be reason alone I have to have foreigners on assist at number eight because the deck is really good and really scary. It can literally just steal games out of nowhere. They have one guy that can just come into the field and blow field up. And they have one guy to the Harpy Feather Duster. So what is there not to like about Inferno noise? Coming in at number seven, we have Satellanite. I mean, what is there not to to like about Satellanite. The deck is very consistent. The deck can control the field with Alpha Nova. The deck can toolbox out of his um, extra deck with pretty much out for everything. If you have your access to Giant Hand, if you have Castells, Triver as a card, the deck is really great and it can control the field. Um, there's no more to be said about this deck. Some people call it kind of helmet, but Altair the Neb, Altair the Neb is really great plays. And I'm pretty sure the deck is more than Altair the Neb, even though that's the main play for the deck. But the deck is really good nonetheless, and I had to have it number seven on this list for that reason alone. Coming in at number six, Masked Heroes. Now, you guys know Masked Heroes was going to be on this top ten list, and you guys already know I'm a Masked Hero player. But let's talk about why Masked Hero is number six on this list. It has great matchups for every for all the meta decks. It can control the field via Dark Law, and it could OTK. I cannot stress enough how this deck can OTK, it can just out of OTK out of nowhere with the call and the Honey builds, just tag, 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 um, mass change, mass change. Um, it has good ma matchups for Necros, BA, Kaleefort, the list goes on. It can beat Satellanite, which is why I have on the list higher on Satellanite, because with Dark on board, it can't Alpha Nova. It does have problems with the next deck I'm going um, to talk about, but other further than that, the deck is just really good, really solid. If we had Stratos released the deck would be a lot higher on the list but for those reasons alone the deck has great matchups like i said it can control and it can otk coming at number five i have ritual beast 
the deck can control really great um searching out steeds is really good the surprise factor of people still not siding for this deck is ridiculous but it's still a surprise factor nonetheless and despite the fact that what people say the deck seems fairly consistent to me um i used to think the deck wasn't as consistent until the deck two versions of the deck top eight at nationals and that bumped the deck up in my mind i used to think mass heroes is a better deck than this deck but results don't lie and with that being said rookie beast had to be higher up on this list at number five for in my opinion one of the best decks of the format coming in at number four we have shadows i mean the deck control we already know what shadows does when does a thing a knowledge hits is thing constructs is thing the deck and toolbox and knowledge hits is a great out to necros windows a good out for bas um they have a fire one that does something really great and the deck is pretty much unpredictable because there are so many different versions of shadows that you can run not every shadow player you play against are gonna be running a version that you might be used to like I have times where I go to locals, I'm used to people playing standard shadows, and I go to regionals, I'm, then I play up against somebody using artifact shadows, or they might be using the hand shadows. There are so many different versions this deck can play. It's really unpredictable. About, it's really hard to prepare for the deck, really much so. But that being said, I had to have shadows on this list at number four. Coming in at number three, we have Cleefort Turbo. Um, towers is a card, I mean, the whole goal of the deck is to make towers first turn and just control the game. The deck can OTK with Cleef for disc, spamming out monsters, attacking for game. And the deck, of course, can control with just beating you down with cards like Lose One Turn, Skill Drain plus Cleef for Monster, and just bringing out towers and controlling the board. So with that reason, with that reason alone, and with that being said, I had to have Cleef for Turbo on this list at number three. And last but not least, coming in at number two and number one, Necros and BA tie. Um, I really couldn't decide which deck was better between Necros and BA. While Necros did not win the US Nationals and while BA did win the US Nationals, Necros did t take a bunch of slots throughout the year since the time of release. Way more slots than Burning Biz took, despite the fact that Burning Biz outbeat it at the US Nationals. But with Necros taking a hit, losing the D-Gen lock, the deck obviously got weaker, but at the same time, the deck is still really good. And I honestly think with the t hits Necros took, it made Burning Abyss pretty much more on par with the deck, even though a good Burning Abyss player probably could be a good Necros player. Then again, good Necros players, can, I'm pretty sure, has adjusted to the changes that deck has to take. But yeah, they're both very consistent. They both can toolbox and they both can stall. So with that being said, they both are tied for number two and number one. Couldn't really decide between the two. You guys let me know which two, you, between the two, you guys think is better in the comment section down below. So as a recap, Necros NBA tie at number two and one, Cleef for Turbo at number three, Shadows at number four, Ritual Beast at number five, Master Rose at number six, Satella Knight at number seven, Inferno is at number eight, Synchrons at number nine, and the Surprise Factor Tunes at number 10. This was my top 10 decks for the August 2015 format. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up to start support. As always, comment down in the comment section below what you guys thought about my um, top 10 list at hand. And of course, I do these videos because I truly believe in helping you guys become better players. And also do these videos because I truly believe you guys help me become a better player. This was Chris from Team Innovation signing out. See you guys in the next video and stay innovative, guys. Peace.